Hey all, welcome to Share Trek. This is Raj here. Friends, today we are going to check a company called Altimmune. Uh, it's not a gene therapy company, but it's very exciting. This was brought to my attention by one of our very active subscribers, uh, David Best, who is very engaged with the channel. Thanks, David. This is a shout out to you out here. Uh, I think that this company could have a major catalyst on the way. And if everything goes well, probably by uh, before the end of 2024, we may see a very good opportunity to make money with Altimmune. Of course, this is my personal opinion, not financial advice. So please keep that in mind and do your own due diligence before making any investment decisions. And um, the catalyst for this company is most likely to come from its weight loss drug. So let's take a closer look. Let's get started. Welcome back friends. Altimmune was founded in 1997 by Christopher Tang and uh, they raised around four uh, rounds of funding before going public in May 2017 through a reverse merger with a company called Pharmathene and the shareholders of Adimmune ended up owning 58.2% of the combined company that was called Altimmune. Post merger, Bill Enright who was the CEO and Elizabeth Sherpak, who was the CFO of Altimmune, retained their respective roles in the new company. At the time of merger, they had around $20 million in cash and cash equivalents, as well as they had four uh, candidates in their pipeline in clinical trial, and they had one candidate in the preclinical trial uh, state. The thing going in favor for Altimmune is their non-alcoholic steatohepatitis or NASH therapy called pemvidutide. And this has received fast track designation from FDA, which is a very exciting prospect. And also the way it got the fast track is very important. NASH is a real concern, a serious liver condition that could really mess up things for the patient. And it was the top reason for liver failure and uh, liver transplants worldwide. And you know what? There weren't any approved treatments for it until recently. Can you believe that? Altimmune came up with pemvidutide and uh, checking it out in folks with a condition called non-alcoholic fatty liver disease or NAFLD. And guess what they found? This drug didn't just show promise, it actually stood out from the crowd. It helped reduce liver fat and markers of liver inflammation like never seen before. Plus, it did not cause any major problems in terms of safety or tolerability. As a result, the FDA fast-tracked it, and when FDA fast-tracks a drug, it's like FDA saying, hey, this looks good, let's speed things up. So it's called the fast-track designation. Now they are knee-deep in trials. There is this big trial called IMPACT, I-M-P-A-C-T. It's all about seeing if femvidutide can actually help people with NASH. They are looking at things like whether it can make NASH go away and improve the condition of the liver in terms of either preventing scarring of the liver or reducing the scarring of the liver. And they're enrolling around 190 people, some with diabetes and some without diabetes. And they're not just stopping at 24 weeks of trial, they're following up for a whole year to make sure that everything is safe and sound and nothing escapes them. But wait, there is more. They're also looking, looking at pemvidutide for another problem, obesity. In a trial called Momentum, they are seeing if it can help with um, obesity and they've already checked in with 160 folks after 24 weeks and the results looked promising. Now they are waiting to see what happens with nearly 400 people almost, I mean, after almost a whole year of treatment, uh, they are looking at the data. Exciting stuff, right? And I'm particularly excited about this uh, obesity use for pemvitridide. So in other words, one of the things that's happening here with uh, Altimmune is they have got this pemvitridide, which is going to, in my opinion, it's going to be a blockbuster drug because it can be used for multiple conditions. They are looking at MASH, they are looking at NASH, and also they are looking at obesity. And obesity is an area where we have seen blockbuster drugs. Many people, I mean, most people want to be slim and they also love the food. So we have seen a drug succeed in this area and the market size is growing very fast. Uh, that is, that's what is getting me excited. However, as investors, I always remind myself that we need to take into account other aspects of Altimmune pipeline. Altimmune recently announced the discontinuation of its hepatitis B program following disappointing results from a phase two trial of its candidate Hep T cell. The trial showed insufficient efficacy leading to the termination of further development of uh, Hep T cell, an immunotherapeutic aimed at stimulating CD4 plus and CD8 plus T cell response against hepatitis B virus. 
and uh, it did not uh, meet the efficacy standards of phase two, even though it met all the safety endpoints in phase one. And as a result, it was to be discontinued. Now that they have discontinued that, the only trick they have in their pipeline is, um, is pemvitidide. And now Altimmune is shifting its focus to the obesity market where its candidate pemvitidide has shown promising result. And that's the low hanging fruit for Altimmune in my opinion. In phase two trials, pemvitidide has uh, uh, demonstrated significant weight loss with some patients achieving a 20% reduction in weight. And the drug, which is a GLP-1 uh, agonist, is also being uh, investigated for metabolic dysfunction associated uh, steatohepatitis, which is called MASH. And Altimmune CEO Vipin Garg highlighted the positive outcomes from their momentum trial, emphasizing the, uh, that pemvitidide's ability to target adipose tissue uh, sets it apart from other obesity treatments. And the company is eagerly awaiting results from its phase 2B MASH trial, MASH trial, uh, expected in the first quarter of 2025. And until recently, there were no approved therapy for NASH. And the recent approval of uh, Restifara from uh, Madrigal Pharmaceuticals for NASH was big news. And this happened as recently as earlier this month, maybe 10 days ago. And this takes a little shine of Altimmune. We'll go and check the price chart for Altimmune before we finish this video. We expect to see a little bit of a dip uh, in this month before it can pick up again. And as investors, we need to be grounded in reality. I constantly remind myself about this. Let us remind ourselves that it is not easy to get a drug approved by FDA and not all clinical trials end up with approval. I'm a little bit hyped up with uh, pemvitidide for obesity because I am expecting that in the second half of the year, we'll get data. And um, th that's a big catalyst for this, uh, uh, this company. And let's, uh, let's take the case of another company. I'm just going to give this as a word of caution. I'm not saying this is going to happen to Altimmune, but look at the case of Intercept, a company which until 2023 was hot. Intercept was founded in uh, 2002 to deliver uh, and develop novel medicines for people living with rare liver diseases. And it was a front runner in the race to bring the first ever treatment for NASH to market. The FDA rejected its uh, Okaliva therapy due to bad results. The rejection took such a big hit on Intercept that in the last quarter of 2023, the company sold itself to Italian pharmaceutical company Alpha Sigma in a deal worth around 800 million. I can get excited about this company due to the weight loss aspect of pemvitidide, which I think is going to be a blockbuster. And the weight loss market, as per some estimate, was close to 2.82 billion in 2022. I do not have the latest statistics for 2023, but this is one area where we have seen blockbuster drugs making big money. It's projected to grow significantly, reaching an estimated US dollar 22.85 billion by 2030, with a compound annual growth rate or CAGR of around 26.1%. On the flip side, there will be competition and hence pressure on the margins will be very high. If pemvitidide is cheaper to make, then it will have an advantage over its competitors that are already in the market which have advertised heavily, built a name recognition and captured the market share. Two heavily advertised and popular medication in this area are uh, semaglutide, which, which goes under the brand names Ozempic and Vegovi, both are produced by Novo Nordisk, and these medications are currently leading the market. And Vegovi is specifically FDA approved for weight management. Then there is another uh, medicine called Liraglutide with the brand name Saxenda, another GLP-1 agonist by Novo Nordisk used for uh, weight management. So one thing that concerns me with uh, uh, Altimmune is that uh, pemvitidide is the only drug in their pipeline and it's being tested for uh, three different conditions and it's being targeted for both MASH, NASH as well as obesity. Uh, approval for the obesity use may come by the end of this year because end of phase two and FDA meeting is scheduled for second half of the year. This could be a major catalyst. But then we are looking at a situation like what we have with Bluebird Bio, which has got three expensive therapies uh, already approved by FDA and in the market, but it has an empty pipeline. So with the same drug being targeted for different indication, we are looking at Altimmune being in a similar situation. Then the questions become, uh, question becomes, do they have enough cash or are they cash trapped like uh, Bluebird? Are they going to do uh, another equity issue? 
or equity dilution. So in that context, uh, Alt Immune had a um, cash position of 198 million at the end of 2023. And though the company has not uh, declared what their estimated cash runway is going to be, I think based on their current burn rate, they're good for until last quarter of 2025, assuming nothing unusual happens and assuming that they don't pick up any new uh, cash burning uh, therapy or activity. And approval for obesity may change this outlook drastically because then the revenue stream from the obesity drug could start coming in 2025, even if we assume it, start coming, uh, it starts coming into uh, play somewhere around end of first quarter of 2025, uh, still it can uh, continue to extend the cash runway and start building the balance sheet of the company and it will become a company with products in the market, so which is a different ball game. And uh, that could be really rewarding for the share price. So that's what I have. Let us quickly go into the uh, price chart and then we'll uh, end this video. This is the chart for Altimune. We are looking at it um, uh, through our trading view platform. And at one time I thought we could have a nice neat cup and handle pattern and put a target out there. But we have already come down twice. And generally in uh, technical analysis, you look at the support and resistance that are being formed so there's a support out here we are bounced off the support and now we are going up on a diagonal line of support in the last two days and as i mentioned earlier with the approval of um, madrigal's nash therapy there could have been an impact for this company you can see that somewhere around the first of march uh, i think we started dropping and now we have started picking up because Madrigal's uh, Nash therapy has already come into market. And now investors are all looking at, at Altimmune and, and seeing the potential with the obesity drug. So I'm thinking that we are potentially starting off on a, a new bull channel. And if you look at this as a double bottom, uh, then I can uh, project a target, price target, provided I can find the ne neckline. And in order for me to find the neckline, I need the progression to take place for a few more days uh, and reach a level where I can have a neckline. I think the neckline should be somewhere around 11.13 or 11.15. So let that happen and then I'll project a, a target price for, uh, for this therapy, uh, for this company. I don't see anything else out here. The momentum has picked up sharply, so that is good. If you look at their um, latest earnings, right, they, they came on uh, around 18% uh, below expectation with the EPS, worse than what was expected by around 20%. So that was the bad factor. And that also uh, has got an impact on the share price. And their revenue came up much higher than expected. But with companies like this where they don't have a steady revenue, uh, it's very difficult to estimate revenue. But overall, I think they are on the mend. They are on a new bull channel, I'm thinking. So let us uh, wait and see what happens here. And also, if you recollect the technical analysis course that I have, the free course that I have in the channel, I was speaking about uh, moving averages. So if you look at the moving averages, they're all in the right place for a bull channel. The, the golden cross has already happened somewhere uh, in the month of November and December. We already had the golden crosses. So we are in a bull channel right now. So the transition already happened here uh, into a bull channel. But of late, we have been seeing a little bit of crossover. The 9-day has crossed over the 20-day and the 50-day, creating two death crosses. So I think that's going to be uh, turned around its head because of the increase in momentum and also being in a new bull channel. So I'm, I'm having a cautiously positive, a positive outlook on uh, Altimmune. With that, my friends, I would like to bring this video to an end. Please let me know what you think about Altimmune, if you have it in your portfolio or not. And again, these are all my personal opinion. So please don't get excited and go out and buy that. Um, please do your own due diligence. Talk to your financial advisor, especially talk to your spouse, right? Because my personal experience is that if you don't talk to your spouse and your portfolio goes for a toss, you're going to have a really difficult time. Okay, so be careful out there. With that, my friends, I'd like to bring this video to an end and I'll catch up with you again in the next video. Bye for now.